I think finding the endurance has been an attraction for a long time, um, in a way because it's known to be such a difficult site. That is the challenge, and I think it, you know, it's typical of the great challenges that the more difficult they are, the more people think, I would quite like to do that. Shackleton's Endurance Expedition was set up in the, the aftermath of uh, first Amundsen and then Scott reaching the South Pole a few years earlier. Shackleton wanted to return to Antarctica, but what was the next big challenge? And he thought this up, the next big challenge was the, a transantarctic expedition. And so he named his endurance expedition, as we call it colloquially, the Imperial Transantarctic Expedition. And his aim was to start on the Weddell Sea side of Antarctica and to get to the South Pole over the unmapped terrain of East Antarctica. Shackleton um, was told in South Georgia as they were departing for the Weddell Sea. The whalers said it was a bad ice year. But of course Shackleton had raised the money to go, he had the ship, he had everything in place. So naturally he wanted to go and they proceeded down the east side of the Weddell Sea. And in fact they had an opportunity probably to get ashore about a hundred miles short of where Shackleton had intended to set out, but they pressed on through increasing sea ice because he thought 100 miles is a lot more terrain to cover on land. And then before they were actually able to reach their target site of Vassal Bay, the ship became embedded in the ice of the Weddell Sea and then it floated on, drifted with the sea ice for 10 months and was finally crushed after the end of that 10 months. So the, the ship sank and the party of 28 was left on the sea ice surface. To start with, they thought that they would drag the three little whaling boats, the three little rescue boats that they had with them, across the sea ice to the ice edge, but very rapidly that dragging proved to be damaging to the boat and actually physically almost impossible to do. So they sat at what they called Ocean Camp for a further period of several months before the sea ice broke up. Then they had a very traumatic trip of about 100 miles to try and find uh, an island where they could land and hopefully one which would be known to whalers. They ended up on Elephant Island which was a bleak rock basically with no even semi-permanent shelter um, around it. Um, and so after they'd been there a couple of weeks and recovered to some extent, Shackleton realised that probably the whole party would die there if he didn't use one of the whaling boats to, to raise the alarm and induce rescue because of course nobody had any idea in those pre-radio days where they were. So he, together with five others, um, went on one of the small whaling boats, the Little James Caird, 800 miles, 1300 kilometres to the island of South Georgia where they knew there was a whaling station. And this is regarded as one of the epic small boat voyages ever undertaken across some of the steepest, harshest seas in the world, and indeed a feat of navigation by his captain, uh, Frank Worsley. Um, they arrived at the western side of South Georgia, exhausted, left three of the men there, and then three of them, Shackleton, Worsley and Crean, had to undertake the first crossing of the unmapped mountains of South Georgia. So they'd done this epic boat journey and survive that and then they have to do an epic mountain crossing as well because the whaling station was on the other side all the time knowing that if they failed no news would ever come out and the whole party of 28 would probably die and even of course after they got to South, South, South Georgia the problem was not solved he had to get another ship to go back to Elephant Island to rescue the 22 men who were still there and that he did even only at the third attempt because the sea ice kept stopping the earlier ships from getting back. So again, he persevered there right through to the end. I was asked almost a year ago to put together a science programme in the Weddell Sea area. The scientific aims of the expedition are firstly to try and understand about the dynamics, about the form and flow of the ice shelves which are fed by ice from the interior of the Antarctic ice sheet. 
they hold back ice, they buttress ice uh, from faster flow in huge drainage basins of hundreds, th hundreds of thousands, in some cases over a million square kilometres. And if ice starts to flow faster, this would be an additional increment to the one metre or, or so of global sea level that we think global sea level rise that we think will take place by 2100. Combined with that is the aim, if we can get to the site or close to the site of the sinking of Shackleton's Endurance, the intention is to do a survey with the autonomous underwater vehicles who are specced down to 6,000 metres of water depth and we know that the Endurance is in about 3,000 metres water. So they do a first site survey and if on those echograms the wreck of the endurance is found then the ROV goes down there, the remotely operated vehicle which is tethered goes down and that will come within a few metres of the vessel and take very high resolution photographs of it which we can, which we can use to produce a really state of the art three dimensional uh, model. And of course how do we know the position of the wreck in the first place? We know it because Frank Worsley who was clearly an expert navigator through his navigation of the little James Caird between Elephant Island and South Georgia, he also fixed the drift of the endurance as it was trapped in the sea ice of the Weddell Sea. What do we want to do with it afterwards? Not touch it. The idea is to take nothing away but just to image and record in as much detail as we possibly can so that we just know what it's like now at the bottom of the sea. Now, I'm a scientist and of course, and I'm most interested in the science of the ice shelves of the Western Weddell Sea and what climate change does for them. But of course, I'm also director of the Scott Polar Research Institute and as well as being a science and social science research laboratory, we all are also one of the great keepers of Britain's polar history. Our archives, our artifact collections projected through our museum are almost without parallel. We hold Shackleton's diaries and so on and many times I've, looked, I've read through elements of the diaries. These are wonderful things and to see the wreck and to image the wreck would bring them back to life in a certain quite compelling way.